Welcome to Community America Ballpark. I'm Matt Folks, Director of Media Relations, along with, I was going to say first baseman, but first baseman, left fielder, uh, but all around good guy, David Espinosa. And, and uh, at some point during the season, we'll talk to Espy about his his career to this point and the season and that type of thing. But today, as we record this, it's the first day of the MLB draft. And so it seems like a good time to talk to him because uh, he's actually a first round draft pick out of high school in, in uh, Miami, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. In, uh, yeah, I keep wanting to say in 99, but in 2000. 2000, yeah, a long time ago, regardless. Well, but as you think back to that time, though, which it's hard to believe it's been 14 years, but I mean, as you think back to that time now, especially as a high school kid, knowing you're going to be a first-round pick, because you had a pretty good idea going into it, but but what do you remember most out of just that whole time and that experience? Well, that whole season was was incredible because I, I never knew. I knew there would be a tension, obviously, because I was supposed to be drafted. But I will never forget my first game where there was every team – in the stands including their bosses like cross checkers and gms Be- between all those people there must have been 60 like front office uh people and um luckily i did pretty well um you know my senior year was i had a great season i, I rarely had a bad game and you know and that's what you got to do when when you're in that position you got to show what you can do you got to be able to run um, you got to always run the ball out. You got to play hard. And when you're not having a good game, especially, that's when they look at you. And I'll never. This is another memorable moment from that season. I went 0 for 4 in a game, and um, you know I don't really get mad. I mean, obviously I, I want to have the results, but I wasn't mad. And uh, I had a, a random scout approach me after the game and said that he was impressed with the way I, I behaved because um, he he pays attention to how players react to failure so that was something that was memorable for me I would say especially for somebody who's 18 years old and and getting the attention you were getting yeah especially and then you know when you're an 18 year old kid and you, I'm gonna say you're dominating high school but you're, you're hitting 500 that's right. that's pretty dominating right. and when you have a bad game it, those are rare so if there's gonna be any moment where there's gonna be you know an upset 18 year old it'd be there and I guess I acted the right way, and he was impressed. So, you know, those are things that go in into your makeup. I mean, that, that's stuff that they write down. You know, it's not just uh, how hard he throws and how fast he runs. It's like little things like that, and those little things are really important. What was your natural position at that time? I was a shortstop. Um, but, you know, like I do now, I, I really could play anywhere. I just, I just like playing. Um, obviously, I want to do well at that position so wherever I feel like I'm comfortable and I could help the team I'll just I'll, I'll go wherever you know so the uh, speaking of going the the Reds took you in uh, the first round which I mean again you're the 23rd pick but just to be a first round draft pick is cool but we were talking a couple weeks ago that you actually thought and were told that uh, you'd probably go a bit higher well yeah that year everything just fell into place I did really well and even before my senior year, I was on the U.S. national team, and I led the team in hitting. I pretty much did everything that I needed to do. Um, and every scout I, I spoke to, especially towards uh, closer to the draft, um, a lot of the teams that were drafting like five or later, they didn't think that I would get to them. So that's how I, you know, that's when I really knew. I was like, wow, I could go pretty high. And then, sh- you know, baseball is a crazy game because at, at that year especially, just a few days for the draft, my my uh, advisor at the time was Scott Boris, and uh, he was telling me that all the teams are seeking pre-draft deals, they're trying to save money, and uh, a lot of the top guys ended up falling. You know, me and Xavier Nady were considered to be one of the top four to five players in the draft, and Scott even told me to not be surprised that I would fall to the second round. So I was prepared for that, and there were teams that are, you know, that inquired that if I would sign for X amount, if I agree ahead of time, and you know, my answer to them was, if you really want me, like me as a player, draft me, because right. if you know me, you know I want to play ball, yeah. and you know, teams that year, I, I want to say like 16 or 17 picks in the first round were pre-draft deals. 
And that's, you know, something that has changed a little bit since then, but a lot of people don't realize that a lot of their pre-draft deals are there. Yeah, I mean, now the, cha- the draft has changed dramatically. It's capped now. So now I, now it's more about how good you are and, and, you know, a little bit of what the need is for the team. But um, I think it's a good step in what they're doing with the draft. Now, when it, I'm, not, I'm just going to add this. I really wish there was an international draft as well because there's so many good players internationally. And some of them sign for good money, but a lot, a lot of them, they don't. You know, from the poor countries, they they give them a thousand dollars, and and then they got a sign. You know, so I'm hoping that in the future something like that can happen. Was that was that an overwhelming experience for you? I mean, just overall, or did were you pretty even keeled through all of it? No, it was it was really emotional because um, I mentioned to you earlier that you know the team, the Reds thought that I would sign for a certain amount because my family didn't have a lot of money or, or anything. So the initial offer, I, I didn't take it, and I was set to go to Miami. I mean, I was I went to orientation and everything, um, and, you know, literally the morning of, they the, the amount of money, it was like a million more dollars, like, from one day to the next. So, But I was serious about going to school because... I, I that I took I took that as offensive, you know. Oh, you know, your family doesn't have money. You'll take that money, which is a lot of money anyway. But it's not what I felt like I was worth, you know. So, but ultimately, it worked out because I also got a college scholarship program out of it, which I'm took advantage of the last few years, and I'm almost done. I graduate in December. Very good. Congratulations on that. You mentioned Scott Boris. So I at least have to ask you about Scott because around here in Kansas City, with the you know the Royals across town, it's been kind of a bad name over the years. But uh, anytime I talk to a, a Scott Boris client, they absolutely love him. Scott's one of the most. He's probably one of the smartest people in baseball, if not the smartest. And I think what teams know is that they know he's very smart, and his players don't get underpaid. You know, um, and I know it's a business. Teams try to get, shoot, if I could get a player for less of what he's worth, why wouldn't you? But Scott makes sure that you get paid, you know. So Scott does a tremendous job, and he's the best agent in the baseball world, I think. Um, he has unlimited resources. I mean, he, he did great for me. I can't say anything negative about Scott. And, I mean, he's a great guy, too. I love Scott. So as you sit here now, Basically, 14 years later, fond memories of that time. Any regrets of that time? Well, you know, there were times where I felt like I should have gone to college because going out of high school is a huge jump because you're thrown into a world with men and you're just a kid. And but then there's the, it's a lot of money, and going to college is also a risk. You know, you could go to college and get hurt. So, you know, the money was right. I had the college scholarship whenever I was ready to go to school, you know, it was part of my contract. So, you know, I just decided to go pro. Um, and after experience school the last few years and talking to my friends that went to school before going pro, the guys that go to college after high school, they take a lot of classes that really don't do anything for them. <laughs> So they'll be in school for three years and they'll still have like two and a half years of school left. And they wasted a lot of time in college. And, and you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of time is dedicated to baseball too and your studies are affected. Well, the way the route I'm taking now, I'm in the off season, I'm just concentrating on school and I've done really well in school. I think I have like four or five semesters in a row getting straight A's. That would never happen if you're playing college baseball you got too much going on it's really tough to do well we appreciate uh, you taking time to do this and and uh, best luck throughout the rest of the season but again we will uh, we'll do another video at some point down the road but thanks for sharing these memories today oh yeah it's great there's there's a lot of stories we'll we'll talk about them later he is david espinosa i'm matt folks thanks for watching and uh, come out to the ballpark sometime and cheer this guy on <laughs>